I was scrolling through Facebook, so a kid that was getting beat up and showing me looked about 11, how could you do that? Hit him in the face when you had about 20 at the back. Come to Blackpool and you will see. Got the Blackpools, I was on the sand and the sea. If it wasn't for my fans, yeah, it wouldn't be me. My slang word is little T. Felt like a butterfly, seemed like a bee, yeah. And the side's so bright. Not saying that we do not fight. People say that my grime's not nice from Blackpool and I am so proud just and I get my town found, yeah. My name's Poet and I'm from Tottenham in North London. I grew up around grime and saw a bunch of my friends become pivotal to this new movement in London in the mid-2000s. A few months back, I started seeing things pop up everywhere about a YouTube channel showcasing MCs from Blackpool and it was the maddest thing I've seen in a very long time. Fuck that shit, get tested for crap. I'm in Manchester, girl, don't hate me. That girl's next man wanna date me. Wanna take me to matches and that because their girlfriend is a little rat. But too many boys are little man size. The man size trying to get the dick in my pants. It wasn't the fact that I had never heard a rapper with a northern accent before. This was nuts to me in so many ways, I, I couldn't stop watching. Most of them were seriously young, like 12, 13. They were almost all white, all sending for each other in every video, and not just normal insults. Some of the language they were using was wild. Come calls me the white storm peak, and your mum's on my D, D, fuck with me. Put that bitch part three, she was on the floor. She was like, I don't want no more. So I got the bitch, what, yeah, part four, I'm a loser. I mean, I'm used to battles in the sense, but the racist and sexual stuff from sweet looking little kids was just way too much for me. And the amount of views they were getting was insane. I have come to Blackpool. And I've come to Blackpool to investigate grime. Because the grime scene in Blackpool is actually emerging. I mean, grime hasn't been this big ever. We're going to New York, we're going to Australia, we're going absolutely everywhere. I didn't realise we're going Blackpool. To get to the bottom of the scene, it was clear I'd have to find the three key players that have received far more attention than the rest. First up, man like Afghan Dan. You little cheeky bastards. You little cheeky twat. Liam, you're just a cheeky bastard. No more gas, no more bullshit. Let's talk facts. You used to mess with me bare on Facebook, pussy yo, but I never message you back. Now, Blackpool Grand might be a joke to most of the country, but he's becoming a proper star up here. South as well. You cheeky bastard. You cheeky bastard. You know, no. <laughs> how you doing, bro? You good? How you doing, my brother? How you good? Obviously, for me, what's so interesting about this whole situation is that I'm from London. Yeah. So I was very much involved in the grime scene when it was progressing in London, when it first started, mm. like going to pirate radio, mm. the fact that it was very raw, very honest. It's a lot changed in certain London. A lot has changed. It's become a little bit more glamorous, so on and so forth. Obviously, there's a lot of money in it. Yeah. The beauty about this in Blackpool is that you're kind of at the same spot that man was in like a good 10 years ago. Yeah. So right now, it's the best time to really be a part of it because you, you, you lot are the pioneers. Yeah. We are quite behind in terms of music stuff like, do you know what I mean? Like we rap, rap was. And it's only recently that like, we've got onto it, do you know what I mean? It's not too different for London, you know what I mean? There's that like, struggle down here, like severely like, poverty ridden areas. Afghan Dan, big yeah. man. Where'd that come from? When I started high school, obviously, nobody knew where I came from. There's a lot more of a white majority around here. So how much black people were in your school? I was like one of three. They weren't used to the, the, the site, do you know what I'm saying? I've got a mixed race lad around here. Name. Like, it was a conversation actually in the playground. Like, you just have a nickname, Dan, you know what I'm saying? Somebody come out of Afghan, Dan. It was said to offend me back then. There was a bit of a bullying issue at school because of it. Oh, is it? It was, it was bad. Racial discrimination, that's what it was back then. But now when wow. I look back and I say it, it wasn't really racial, it was just like more ignorance. Despite the cheeky nature of his music, Dan's clearly been through some tough times. We headed to his favourite chippy to get more of a feel of this troubled town. You gotta get fish and chips down there, I insist. See South Scran. Alright, so Dan, when Grand started in London, there was no one before us. The no. first, my first music is Bashment, Reggae, Revival. Yeah. Who did you listen to prior in Blackpool that could have inspired you? The kind of music we used to listen to down there was like donk music. MC came from that. All that just like represents just like messy gaffes. That's what it was. Just going out, you know what I mean, and then that on a weekend and just grabbing a microphone, sweating your bean off, you know what I mean, in a gaff, <laughs> and then just, just chatting shit, mate. That's what it was. Uh, same bro. Hey, come over here a minute. This is Josh. Yeah. This is Cartrix in town. Can I come? Say so. Mm, yeah. What's up? 
Let's see how good Josh is, Kaz. Yeah. Whoa, look at that! On oh, my mum's life, that's my card. So there's some really talented people in Blackpool. It's not really talent, that's survival, that man. That's what you say there. You know, families are devastated by drugs and drink. That's what happens. Him there, he's talented, you know what I'm saying? But there's nothing for him. There's no guidance, no support, you know what I mean? So everything that's happened, everything that you've seen about Afghan Dan or the Blackpool grime, it's, it's all been done in the back of like someone's bedroom, you know what I mean? It's, we, we've done it ourselves. But obviously, what I'm trying to do myself is to show Blackpool in a different light, you know what I mean? Because there is magic behind the streets here, you know what I'm saying? It's not all doom and gloom, and there's wonderful things happening down there, but it's just not captured, in it, you know what I mean? And it should be. We should. Wiley, can you hear me, yeah? So I'm with yeah. Afghan Dan from Blackpool, yeah? Donny is like a star out here, Wiley. He's mad. He does grime, and he's putting grime on the map in Blackpool. Can you give him one bit of advice? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yes, Make sure that you become someone in your area and then you get yourself around the country because obviously if you're within your area, you need to get around the country to see who else likes you, not just in that No, oh, I appreciate that, boss. Uh, no, that's why that's actual Riley, yeah. Yeah, that's why. Uh, no, that's why. Oh, thank you. Oh, God, sick. The entry level into the world in grime in Blackpool is beef. Send for someone. Shit like beef, that's what it is. Yeah, but yeah, that's it, yeah. After my first video to Mitch Edwards back in like 2014, it just, people loved it, do you know what I'm saying? It got loads of attention. Yo, yo, if you're gonna chat to me, chat to me properly. Am I better than you? Well, probably. Bitch, you're a full blown kid when you don't know shit, cause, well, nobody's stopping me. And I was just sat in the couch in my youth hostel, just stood there on the black baby tablet. I don't wanna start bragging, but if you come to my gap, it'll be your ass when we shagging. I, I could count my hands the amount of like serious artists, like the rest of them are just. It's just controversial rap. Kids hyping up, just get a few likes on the profile picture. Like, Little T and Sophie Aspin. Big man, I, you just mentioned Little T. He is moving so as both. And those are the people that you think are not taking it serious. You speak to them, yeah, and they'll tell you this is what they want to do, this is the dream, yeah? But obviously what they're doing, like, they're moving wrong. The content, what they say, end of line is just explicit. So it didn't take long before we got onto the subject of Little T, the kid who for better or for worse, has really put that cool grime into the popular consciousness. Jack on the cam. Yo, bro, do you want beef? Man, we'll take out your teeth from teeth. I am a bomb, I'll be whack by you'll be gone. Syria, fuck that shit. Beat you sick, cause you got a new kit. BG Media, that's what I do. Come around here when I will slay you. Yes. It's mad, but it feels like I'm going to meet a genuine local superstar. What is happening here? I'm nervous to meet a 12 year old kid. You man are looking like Blackpool's answer is so solid. Oh. Sorry, the ends, bro. Oh, I can't come against me, listen, Afghan. Why is this man not sending dough? Is he gonna scare the mighty bro? When he sees you, you ran into Tesco Rook. You was crying. What's the situation with you and Afghan Dan? Like, when my brother's mate, Dylan Brewer, mm -hmm. he, he asked me to do a video with him to send for him, so I did. Yo, Afghan Dan ain't no madman. Me and little T gonna rush his man. He's so black, he's so white, that's so fucked, but it ain't no lies. The only reason why I sent for him, because he's, he's the best on BG, so then people will have more respect for me that I've sent for him. Does everyone send for everyone? Most, yeah, most of the time everybody sends for everyone. Like, some people do it and take it to heart, like the beefing. That's Sophie asked me when I sent for her. What's, yeah, what's Sophie all about? Because I'm hearing no, she's on a crud. I was talking to her on Facebook and then like she was saying that she was going to send for me. So I just sent for her. Straight away? Yeah, straight That's what I rate like, you. You're not on this wasting like, time thing. Like, you're on Man Man's on you, cuz. At 12 years old, you're doing monumental things for your area in Blackpool. Do you ever think about what you do and how it impacts your area? I just want to put Blackpool on the map. We just like to want people to like notice us. Like, we're a town and we, want, we just want to do something. We just like, want to make it somewhere. Like I want to be on like Radio 1 Extra or something like that. Real life? Yeah. Now, we've established that Little T has fans, but he and others in the scene have been on the end of some serious abuse on social media from people who think the whole scene is an embarrassing joke. How much is his mum paying them to let him hang around with them? Look at them, they're filming this video, but he's just kind of like stood next to them all like fucking like Oliver Twist or something. Afghan Dan, he is from Blackpool, I believe. He's part of the BG Media crew who are just full of dickheads. I mean, there are so many dickheads on one channel. It's unbelievable. Fam, the flow, the performance, everything is so whack. I think my ears are actually bleeding. I'm not even gonna lie.
just talk me through your first video. Because, like I said, Blackpool's mad different to me. Like, uh, like on my first video, it was just for a bit of fun. Then I started getting hate. What, what did you say for them to say that? I, I said that, that thing about rape. Yo, yeah, it's like the bifter. I'm gonna rape your little sister. Five chicken licking, I'm gonna give her a kick in. Yo, yes, my name's called Tate. Hard, 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 with your head off the gate. Might be a bimbo, put your head through a window. That's why we have beef, yeah. Did you ever think to yourself, this might be a little bit inappropriate? Mm, that's what I thought, but then I was like, it's just us, no one's gonna view it. And then you said the N-word as well, and did you think the same thing when you said that? Like, no one's gonna watch this. If you believe in Jesus, I'll crucify. Get a pencil, I stick it in your eye. When I see you, it's gonna be like a drive-by. Look, wanna clash me? I'm no source nigga. Might have to torture this nigga. I just thought like it was nothing. I thought it was like okay. no consequences to it. I thought it was just. just you didn't know how bad the word actually was. Yeah. So that's not something you do anymore. No. no. Done with that. Yeah. That's my guy. So you're probably thinking what I'm thinking right now. Where are the parents? So I went to meet little T's mum Donna to see if she backed him all the way. When he put on, I'm going to rape your little sister. I was absolutely fuming. I yeah, didn't yeah, even yeah. know it went on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if it offended anybody, I'm sorry, but I didn't know. It and I asked sense. for it to be removed, but it was too late. It was out there. I'm going to touch on the use of the N-word. It's not something that can be used very casually, not just by a 12-year-old, by anyone. It can't be casually used, no, otherwise people use it. Just a normality word that the, the youngins start saying and then everybody starts saying it. How do you look at it? Is, is it something that's commonly used within your household? Or? No. I've got colour kids. Before all this started, before the little teeth thing come out, Afghan Dan had put a lot of raps on about his brother. Some disgusting ones. So it was more of a dig at Afghan Dan using I that term? I think it was a dig and he used Josh to give the dig, you know what I mean? How about these YouTubers ridiculing okay. your son? What's Look the harsh? Upstairs and drink a bottle of bleach to us all a favour. Go and kill yourself. Bet your mum's a smackhead. Does she work on corner? Is she a benefit bum? It just goes on, it goes on, it goes on. And do you understand to some extent why they would be upset with him for the remarks he's made? Yeah, because it's, I do it's, understand. it's a massive paradox. I do, I do understand. But would they be upset if Storms had said it? It is a very difficult situation. Well, it is, um, but if you didn't have them, I think it'd be a lot more difficult. Yeah, they're intimidating me now looking at the window. I needed to bounce before T's brothers punched me up. But it was interesting and kind of sad to talk to Donna about the crazy situation their family have been put in out of nowhere this year. A lot of what she said made sense, but I struggled to come to terms with what she was saying about her son's use of the N-word. I mean, a white kid using that term in a clearly negative way about a black guy is not comparable at all to a black guy using it as a term of endearment. I've met the two kings, but I needed an appointment with the queen of Blackpool grime. So fast, Ben. Her beef with Little T has been nothing short of legendary, with social media blowing up each time one of them responds in an even more graphic way. Yes, it's Josh and he thinks he's sick. Walking around like a sly little prick, like a sly little prick, cause that's what you was. And if it me, be a worthless ball. That's why Simon says, Simon says, they took your top. If you don't, then you're getting no pop. You've got a tash, fuck this shit, let's clash. Now, recently the feud has entered a new dimension with the attention turning to their mums. And these two have never even met. People are still sending. I heard this one really got on your nerves, though. There's like 15 things that she said to my mum. There's like two things that she said about me. All right, name one of the things that proper got you mad about. Wait, when she said um, something like, your mum gets poke and then leave her, something like that. Something like poke and then leave. That just sticks in my head, mate. Piss, oh, it just annoys me. So then what's the next move? Is it time to send back? No, I'm sending back, mate, and it's my last send. Like, I got one and I go, Sophie, yeah, you look like a man. Say shit about my mum, I knew it was your plan. Nobody likes you, not in Afghan. Your mum is deaf. How the fuck did she pass her driving test? That shit fucked up, that shit's a mess. I say shit like that. Your mum's a slag and I know a routine. Take off my niggas, don't know where they've been. She'll shag it, fuck it, leave it, mop it. So dirty got Casey's bucket, mmm. Finger licking good. That's a well, I got my yeah, G. Hiya. What's that thing that you do with little T? Sophie. We know for your eye, you're not going 
can't freeze my balls. You're like girly with a retard. Look at your makeup, look at your clothes. By the way, you got a big nose. In the picture, what the fuck is that? Oh, don't swear. No, like that, my G. You come across as a quite powerful individual who likes to have their own way, you know? So what type of person you like just in school? Is similar to at home? About two years ago, right, yeah. I went to a school and I was a new girl and because I was from Manchester, yeah. I got bullied. Because you know the new girl, you get quite a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the girls are getting jealous. Rumours went round about me and from then on I got bullied and I didn't go into school. Is your music your escapism? Is yeah, that your... I, d I didn't do any of this till like, what, six months ago. Okay. I was singing and I put a singing video up on Facebook. I put that singing video up and half the girls at that school that used to bully me even turned around and said she's actually quite good and they changed the respect on me a little bit. Let's talk about this YouTube channel. BG Media. I, I did it as a bit of fun. I think everyone was surprised because I was the first girl and I actually had the courage to go and do it. The next day, everyone was like looking at me going, that's Sophie Aspin, oh my God. I heard that Josh didn't like me. Why? How can you hear this? I'm baffed. He was doing a live video on Facebook and he, he put, should I send, for, I, I was watching it and he was like, should I send for that Sophie Aspin? Oh, look. I am. Sophie Aspin, next time I do a video, I'm sending for you, you know. Now I reckon he sent for me because of the views that we both get. We both knew it'd be a big thing. You, you and Little T have sent for each other purely because you've looked at it as a tactical move. I, I didn't have any beef with him. So he was the first person to bring up parent? Because the evidence no, it was is me. It was. I think it was me. So what did you say? I think I said your mum's a doorknob. Everyone's had a turn. <laughs> Calling my mum a slag or whatever, that's fine. But I think when he mentioned my mum being deaf, that was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Say shit about mum, yeah, I knew it was a plan. Nobody likes you, not in Afghan, your mum is deaf. How the fuck did she pass her driving test? That shit fucked up, that's it's a mess. Like, that, that really annoyed me. It's the yes. one thing that'll get to me, and that's the one thing that made me actually fall out of him. So there are some elements of this situation between you and Little T that isn't banter. I understand he was using that as a way to get back at me. If he was to carry on sending for me, I have two more replies that are ready. Yeah, I understand that, you know, there's been confrontations in the past. What would you be up for me and Little T? Yeah, I'd rather get his perspective on things. Because I'm saying all this and I don't even know what he thinks. Man's on one of your videos on a mad thing. Let's take a look at some comments, though. She ugly as fuck. How does that make you feel? Because I've got a younger sister, and she always talks to me about how her friends are insecure and so on and so forth, and it's because of social media. When it's one person that says it, it's not as bad, but when quite a lot of people are saying it is, that's when it starts to affect you, and that's when you start to think, wow, am I really? There's been rumours about me having sex with Afghan Dan because I was with him the other day to work on music. Uh, did you see any of that about Josh? And I think it's because I'm a girl and everyone knows that I'm going to be more sensitive than Josh. Well, no, just because I'm a girl doesn't mean that. But it's easier for him to call me a slag than Josh. What do you do from here, or have you not planned that far ahead yet? But I'm just going to take it as it goes, but I'm grasping every opportunity I can to get bigger. I'm not just doing that, I'm singing, it's different. I just want people to be like, right, she can sing, you know, she can do both. And it, could you, there's not really much like singers and rappers out there, girls as well. Now it could actually be something big and I could make something out of it. That's not what I was expecting at all, considering Sof's online persona. Despite all the aggression on YouTube, she's mature, driven, and is definitely not backing down in any beef. I need to head across town now, as something very rare is happening tomorrow, an actual live grime event in Blackpool. Despite their growing profiles in the city, none of the BG Media gang have ever played a live show, but Afghan Dan is trying to change all of that with his debut headline gig. I said put Team Afghan in it, but you know what, it's not that bad, is it? You know what I mean? Team Afghan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll smack this smile around here, but I'll tell you now. <laughs> I wanted to catch him beforehand to find out more about his past. When I started proper writing, I was in care when I was 15. It was like a, a coping strategy. It got me through a lot of stress. Growing up in Blackpool wasn't the best for me, no. Sometimes I do wish I could have grown up somewhere else, maybe, you know what I mean? But I fell in with the wrong crowd, I suppose. I went out doing burglaries and ended up robbing a hotel. My son was two months old when I went to prison, but I didn't really build up a relationship with him because I didn't really spend a lot of time with him right before I went to jail. But I'm working on it now. You know what I mean? Since I've been out of jail, I just sit in, get high and just write bars. My first crime show, first one I've ever done, and it's tomorrow. 
excited and anxious. I have done a lot of bad things, you know, and I've made a lot of shitty mistakes. Tomorrow was my chance, basically, just to say, you know, I'm trying to change, you know, I'm not that life anymore. I'm not just doing this for myself, you know, like, Blackpool's got a bad reputation as well. This grind thing, you know, as it grows, if it progresses, could open a lot of opportunities. This is the best time. Got the app, you got the app, obviously. I'm on my phone, password. For Facebook? <coughs> Be serious. I need to go live on Facebook, though. This is the biggest part of the fucking night. Whatever, it Roger Fair, what's it doing? It all started out as a bit of Twitter banter, really. Everyone's heard of Afghan Dan around here. Massive social media presence. And then I put a poll out there. Just basically said to them, would you like to see Afghan Dan in Scrooges? There was over 450 people responded. 80, 90% of them said that, yeah, they'd love to see him in here. So, got to listen to what the people want, really. Yeah, you run now, you run now, you run. Let's go for it. Ready? Scrooges business. Let's do it. Oh, 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 Jesus. Too much love, my brother, too much love, I swear to God. It was so gassed in there. So gassed. At the end of the day, he's not rapping about bitches and getting money and stuff. He's rapping about really he's funny about stuff. stuff. He's actually rapping about what Blackpool life is like. You know, a cheeky bastard. You know, a cheeky Oi, you know, a cheeky bastard. You know, a cheeky Oi, you know, a cheeky bastard. Hey, I can't believe I'm only turned you know, up, though, innit? You know what I mean? When I looked at when I jumped on the table, I was like, fuck it, hell. F for me, bro. Tell you what, though, it'll be nice to remember, though, innit? I mean, Scrooge is shut down. You're not, no, for the first time. My friend, yeah. <laughs> Dan's first show was supposed to be the end of this documentary, but I was left with a need to go back up and try and bring the three kingpins of Blackpool Graham together in some way at least. I'm starting with Afghan Dan, as he seems to have mellowed down since I first met him, when he didn't want anything to do with the kids who he thought we're making Blackpool Grime a laughing yeah, stock. Right, that's it. Yeah, yeah, Where's um, Little C? Little C, we'll go see him in a minute. Big man, let me introduce you. This what is, is London. Well, not even London. This is Kingston in a bottle. Oh, 16.5. 16. 16. Take yes. it a go, go. Oh, they... You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> For the bit, wag wag. <laughs> I mean, some of them have got the hits moving. A man drank it and said, well, go on. I can't believe this. We headed off to find Little T and tried to put that racist incident to bed. I was surprised by the fact that Dan didn't seem that bothered about it, but maybe that's just a result of him having to deal with this his whole life. Yeah, what have you been doing? What have you not to? I'm chilling. So you two, you were beefing. Well, there's no beef, was there really? You know what I'm saying? There was no beef. No, you're 12 years old, you don't know what you think, hey, obviously, with the racism, did it? You know what I mean? But you know it's wrong, don't you, what yeah. you said? No. You do you probably regret it, don't you? The way I'm looking at it right now, it's kinda of nice that you two are not even it's not even an issue. With you two, it seems like a misunderstanding. Well, my brother gave me the bar. Your brother gave it to you? Yeah, my brother just tried to say it, so I said it. Twelve years old, you're gonna be easy influenced that age, aren't you? You know what I'm saying? I was once your age. So you've got time, you're young, innit? You know what I mean? Like I said before, you could you could progress into be a very good MC. So boys, are we saying right now? This <laughs> little tea. An Afghan Dan beef is squashed. No, there's no beef there, obviously. I wish you luck, Mom. Wish you luck. So that wasn't too tricky, but Dan is obviously a bit older and remembers the stupid mistakes he made as a teenager. Again, Little T and Soph, aka the Drake and Meek Mill of Blackpool, to make up will be a tougher nut to crack. After a whole bunch of calls, texts, and aborted attempts, they finally agreed to meet with me together at a local chippy. With all the things they've said about each other, this is definitely going to be awkward. Little T and Sophie, my G's. You can't even make eye contact with each other. There must be tons of questions you don't have. Oh, like, I don't even, she didn't even send me for me, send me for my mum. 
What did she say about your mum that angered you? Because that's mine, you're poking the levers. Oh, mate, I was going sick. Just at the end of the day, you know yourself. Your mum's got a slag. I think the only bit that offended me was obviously when you said that about my mum being deaf. We're, we're going to get defensive over it, you know, it's, it's your mum at the end of the day. But it's music. So how do you feel now, T? I was a bit angry. A bit angry? This is me, I would be friends with you, I just really don't like you. Yeah. That's like the same situation I'm in. So you don't like him anymore? I think there, there was too much beef there for it to be. You've gone too far. Yeah, we both went too far with what we've done, so that, that's going to be one thing that we will not come back on, if you know what I mean. Do you know what's so mad, you know? You lot are probably so many, so similar in so many ways, but you don't even know. Real team, one of the worst experiences you've had. I was, in, I was at a bus stop, and then I told school to my dad in Fulton, and then I was standing there, yeah? And then some guy said, little T, so I turned around, like, the other way, the opposite way. And some guys just ran up to me and they punched me and all of them started stamping on me. Yeah? Are you serious? Yeah. Matt Ting, you lot are very hard working. If anyone can say anything about your talent and this or whatever they want, but you've got the foundation, you work hard. Even though you may not like each other, I feel like there's promise here. But would you not do a cypher? I don't know. Come on. I'll do it. Shake on it. So, they may not be best friends, but a positive was they didn't try to scratch each other's eyes out. Plus, they've agreed to do the cypher together with Afghan Dan. I'm gassed. This is Blackpool Grime history right here. The three dons of the scene together for the first time. Whoa. I cannot oh. believe the bass on that car. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit like... It's shit! <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, not yet, not yet. What? This one now, this one now, trust. Josh, this is the drop. I was scrolling through Facebook, so a kid that was getting beat up and showing me looked about 11, how could you do that? Hit him in the face when you had about 20 at the back. Been Look, I will never say start. these are the best that MCs in the, in the country, in mind, but they have heart. And despite growing up in tough circumstances, and you have to remind yourself, they are still growing up. They have created something, and they already regret a lot of the dumb stuff they've said in the past. Look, look, so I remember the days sitting in a hostel watching Lord of the Mites. I used to stare at the TV thinking, one day I want to be like those guys. So I, so I started writing, age 15, and I started grinding. Then I got sent to jail for acting like a div came out when I started grinding. Carrying the whole of Blackpool's grime scene in the back of the car when I'm the guy that's driving. I found it hard as a kid. I had a pretty tough life. My dad was a dick, but at the time it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. I just want to be free, I just want to be me. I just want to climb out of this town and escape so many things I want to see, I want to see. Small girl, big dream, small girl in a small town, that's me. Sat by the seaside, beside the sea, and I'm thinking about what I want to be, but see. Look, I you might not like it, up, but, but you got to ask yourself, what was you doing at the age of 13? Like not getting too many of views on a video, This that's girl's changing sure. just like the weather, here and I ain't going back now, never. See, just that Sophie and Josh, I can relate to what they're saying in the tracks. Ah, fuck off! I'm on the pressure, bro. I'm on the, I'm doing it off the paper. I don't read off paper on the camera. I should have been there. I should have learned it. I'm slacking, bro. It won't make me stop. See, just that. So forget all the sends. Forget oh. all the... That's it. Oh, I'm going to do another take, do another take. Like the biff, the... Ah! You know how to say that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm getting hypothermia, bro. Done. Come on, come on, come on. There's no risk assessment sheet with that contract.